In this video, I'm going to define two important vector products. There isn't a simple vector multiplication like there is a vector addition. Instead, there are more complicated versions of multiplication, two of them in R3. The first is the dot product. It multiplies two vectors, but the result is a scalar. It is also called the inner product or the scalar product. The formula for the dot product is to multiply the matching entries together, first, second, and third, and then add these three terms to produce a single scalar. This may seem a bit odd, but this mix of additions and subtractions turns out to be a pretty useful thing. The best way to understand the dot product is through how it measures angles. The cosine of the angle between two vectors is equal to the dot product divided by the length of the two vectors. Recall the properties of the cosine function. Cosine is 1 when the angle is 0, and then cosine decre decreases as the angle approaches pi over 2. Since the dot product is related to the cosine, the dot product is large when the vectors point in similar directions, small angle, and the dot product is small when the vectors point in disparate directions. When the vectors are perpendicular, the angle is pi over 2, and the cosine is exactly 0. This means that the vectors are perpendicular, and also called orthogonal or normal to each other. The dot product is the easiest and most convenient way to measure and recognize perpendicular vectors. Let me review the algebraic properties of the dot product as well. The dot product is commutative. That means the order doesn't matter. u dot v is the same as v dot u. The dot product is distributive over vector addition. This is the reason it is called a product, because it acts like multiplication in this distributive law. The dot product of a vector with itself produces the square of the length of that vector, which turns out to be a convenient piece of algebra to work with. Finally, if there is a scalar multiplication anywhere in a dot product, on either vector that is, then the scalar can be pulled out and multiplied after the dot product is finished. The dot product can be defined in any dimension by extending the formula, multiplying the matching terms and adding them up. In R3, however, there is a second product which is unique to R3 and doesn't extend to other dimensions. This is the cross product. Given two vectors, u and v in R3, the pro cross product is written with this old school multiplication symbol and is calculated by this strange combination of addition and multiplication. It produces a new vector in R3, not a scalar like the dot product. The dot product measured in some sense the similarity between two vectors. It was large when the vectors pointed in the same direction. The cross product in some senses measures the difference. It is largest when the vectors point in different directions. It has a similar relationship to angle as the cross product, but with the sine instead of the cosine as shown here. But there is yet more going on here with directions, so let me elaborate. If I take this strange formula, I can calculate the dot product of u or v with the output of the cross product. I'll not trace through the entire algebra here, but the result of this dot product is the zero vector. I just said a bit before that the zero dot product means that the vectors are perpendicular. What's the conclusion here? The conclusion is that the cross product of u and v is perpendicular to both inputs. The symbol here is the standard way of indicating two vectors are perpendicular. This is in R3, and now I can explain why the cross product is unique to R3. Given two directions in R3, the cross product constructs the unique direction that is perpendicular to both. In three dimensions, there is only one such direction, while in other dimensions the direction may not exist at all, or there may be, any, be too many options. Finally, let me talk about one last property of the cross product. In the strange algebra of the definition, you can see the mixed terms and subtractions. If you switch u and v around in the inputs, the places of the u and v coordinates are reversed. What results is exactly the negative of the original product. The cross product is anti-commutative. u cross v is equal to negative v cross u. This is strange behavior. You may never have seen a multiplication with this property, 
but it is an important aspect of the cross product. As a result of this, the cross product of any vector with itself is zero. Hopefully this makes sense geometrically. If the cross product produces a unique third direction, but the inputs are the same direction, then there is no unique third direction to define. The inputs need to be pointing in different directions to make sense of it. Finally, the cross product in applied mathematics is very directly connected to angular motion. You may know this, some of this from physics, or you may not, but let me briefly summarize the difference in physics between linear and angular motion. There are two kinds of motion in physics, movement in a straight line and the spinning of a solid body around an axis. Each has a mechanics described mathematically, and there are strict parallels between them. Linear motion is described by its direction, but spinning is described by an axis of rotation. To cause linear motion, force is required. To cause spinning, torque is required. The en energy of linear motion is momentum. The energy of spinning is angular momentum. To stop either kind of motion, a force or torques needs to counteract the momentum or the angular momentum. The mass of an object tells how hard it is to move. It is a measure of resistance to linear motion. The moment of inertia of a body around a certain axis tells how hard it is to spin it. It is a measure of resistance to angular motion. The speed of linear motion is called velocity, but the speed of angular motion is frequency, how many complete spins per unit time. And finally, to cause linear motion requires acceleration, and to cause angular motion requires angular acceleration. Why do I mention all these here? I do so because all of the angular motion in three-dimensional space is calculated with the cross product. For example, torque is the cross product of a vector of force with a vector that connects the axis to the point of the force. Describing rotational motion is basically impossible without cross products. Of note, we will get to calculating moments of inertia in the second half of the course, so I will return to the physics of angular motion at that point.